welcome to Lesson 7 here with uh, Dr. Ken. Uh, we're going to be looking at uh, a little um, introduction again, or revision I should say, to Power Factor. Then we're going to look at Power Factor correction in detail, and then harmonics in detail. So this is chapters 19.4 to 19.5 in our textbook, and harmonics is chapter 20.8. So, in this lesson, we're going to introduce the term power factor, or really we're going to review to the term power factor. We're going to discuss the importance of maintaining a power factor in an electrical supply system above a certain value. That certain value is normally somewhere between 0.9 and 0.95. Then we're going to have a look at what are harmonics and how can harmonics be used to be, or how can we actually reduce harmonics and the effects of harmonics? So um, the first lesson or sub lesson covers uh, power factor. It's actually revision slides four to ten. Then uh, the next part, part uh, we call it nineteen point five, but part three of this. Lesson is slides 11 to 34, actual power factor correction. And then slide, uh, part three, harmonic slides 35 to 46. So our little review of what is power factor. So power factor is just a way of describing the phase difference between the supply voltage and the current. So it describes that phase angle, or the phase difference between voltage and current. Power factor uses the symbol lambda, which looks like an upside down Y. And the power factor is the cos of the angle. And if you remember from our last lesson, um, that's simply a little bit of trigonometry. So power factor can be found from the ratio of true power to apparent power. And there's our formula, if you remember. The phase angle lambda is the cos of the angle, which is true power divided by apparent power P on S, which, are, which is the adjacent over the hypotenuse if we were to represent this in our power triangle. So nothing magical or particularly clever there. So power factor and the power factor triangle, you can uh, see it here. So on the hypotenuse, we have apparent power. And by now, we should have understood that uh, apparent power is that power which seems to be being drawn by the supply, but not all the power is being used. Only the true power component is being used. And we have a reactive component that is just storing and releasing energy and not doing any practical work. So while ever that reactive component is high, we end up with a high angle of theta or a low value of power factor. And that can be a problem to many electrical installations. And I don't know whether you remember from last time, here's a little example that we did just to demonstrate what was going on. So we'll go through it again, just in case you missed it. Let's say we had an AC motor that takes a current of about 12 amps, 230 volts at 50 hertz power supply, and has a lagging power factor of 0.8. And uh, we're actually going to do some correction and try and bring that back to 0.9. So the four things that we need to discover at the moment, one, are the true power taken, three, the phase angle between the supply current and the voltage, the apparent power provided by the power supply, the source, remembering we use apparent power to define generators and transformers because they have to supply all the apparent power even though only a portion of the true power actually gets used. And we also want to work out what the reactive power component of the motor is as well. So the values we have is current 12 amps, voltage 230, power factor 0.8. So 
So our first equation, if you remember, true power is the volts multiplied by the current, Vi, times the cos of the angle. So we already got the cos of the angle, that's the power factor at 0.8, so 230 times 12 times 0.8 gives us 200, two, sorry, 2,208 watts, or we could round that to 2.2 kilowatts. And of course we already have our power factor, we just need to go cos to the minus 1 to turn that into an angle, and if you punch that into your calculator you'll get 36.87 degrees is the actual number of degrees. The third step is to find the uh, apparent power S, and apparent power, its units are VI, so all we have to do is multiply the voltage and the current. So we had 230 volts, a current of 12 amps, therefore we had 2760 volt amps, or 2.76 kVA, or thousands of VA. And finally, if you want to find the Q, it's the volts amps multiplied by the sine of the angle. So of course we know what the angle is at uh, 36.87. We can punch it into our calculator and ask for the sine of the angle. The sine of the angle is 0 0.6. So it's 230 multiplied by 12 multiplied by 0 0.6 giving us 1656 volts amps reactive or VAR or 1.66 kVAR. So here this is again represented on our power triangle. We have our 12 amps at minus 36.8 degrees, 230 volts. And if we represent that in the power triangle, which is just a phasor diagram. So the horizontal phasor being our true power, the vertical phasor being the reactive power, and the hypotenuse of the triangle is the phasor addition of those two, giving us 2. 76 kVA of apparent power. So the supply source has to provide 2.76 kVA of apparent power, but only 2.2 of it is actually working. And that's the bit that annoys supply authorities. Because supply authorities have to build their infrastructure to handle all this kVA that is not actually being used as true power. And if we wanted to reduce our power factor now to 0.9, we could put, turn 0.9 into degrees, and that happens to be so close to 26, 25.84, but 26 degrees we can call it. And if we were to redraw our power triangle, you would notice the triangle is much more shallow now. The hypotenuse of the triangle is not as steep, and therefore it is now smaller. So we only have 2.45 kVA, compared to 2.2. So we have less kVA, we have less reactive power, you can see only 1.2 now. So by reducing this angle, by reducing the reactive power, brings the hypotenuse of the triangle closer and closer and closer and closer to the horizontal. If we can get them, if we can get the hypotenuse flat on horizontal, that means there would be no reactive power, and apparent power and true power would be the same if there was no reactive power. But you can see the big advantage here. We've reduced our current quite considerably. So by reducing our power factor from 0.8 to 0.9, we've gone from 12 amps in the supply to 10 amps. So the infrastructure required to supply this installation at 0.9 requires much less energy and infrastructure, smaller transformers, smaller power lines, all those kinds of things to um, supply the installation. So what are the causes of low power factor? The basic cause of a low power factor is reactance. That's the important word. It's reactance in the circuit. This reactance is usually an inductance and can come in lots and lots of forms. You might have remember I said lightly loaded electric motors. Electric motors typically are about 0.8 or 0.85, but when they're lightly loaded, they're actually closer to 0.5 rather than 0.85.
Same with transformers. If a transformer is lightly loaded, its power factor will be much worse than if it's fully loaded. Fluorescent lights um, often contribute to poor power factor because they have ballast, even though the new electronic ones that are use LED technology don't need that because they don't require a ballast in the sense that uh, the standard um, gas discharge tube type fluorescent light uses, but more of that in the next lesson. So finally on our revision of power factor, how can we determine power factor? Probably the best way to determine power factor in a circuit is to use a watt meter and a volt ammeter. If you remember, a watt meter measures both current and voltage and allows for the power factor. So it only displays true power. That's what a watt meter does. It only displays true power. But a ammeter multiplied by a volt meter gives you apparent power. So our true power here in our equation, so our power factor is true power divided by apparent power. True power can be given to us by a watt meter. Our apparent power by multiplying a the ammeter and voltmeter together and the ratio P on S just gives us the cos of the angle theta. And we can use that ratio to work out what the power factor is. So there's our little bit of revision on what is power factor, what causes poor power factor. On our next lesson, we're going to do deal, sorry, deal with what we can do to actually improve our power factor.